12 of the NFL's finest quarterbacks have left the comfort of their stadiums and luxury suites for the adventure of a lifetime. These gridiron heroes are used to leading their teams on the field, but can they outplay, outlast, and outthrow each other in the ultimate survival challenge? You leave everything you have for the guy beside you! We find a way to win the game no matter what! Let's go, baby! The stakes are high and the competition is fierce. Only one can claim the title of the ultimate survivor. Who will rise to the top and who will be sacked? They wrote me off. I ain't right back, though. That's the problem. I ain't right back. Let's go. <laughs> this is Quarterback Island. It is Quarterback Woo! Island. Feel it. <laughs> Welcome to NFL Daily presented by DoorDash. And yes, NFL Daily where it's always island time. I'm Greg Rosenthal here in the Chris Wessling podcast studio. So lucky to be joined for this special Quarterback Island edition of NFL Daily by Steve Weiss, uh, an original voter of Quarterback Island. Jordan Rodriguez of The Athletic and Colleen Wolf, whose tension I can feel from here. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I feel super not stressed today, but I was just thinking that Wes would absolutely love this segment, especially just from the Tybee Island of it all. Yes. Yes. This is so perfect. I'm excited about it. It, it is. And, and Colleen's asking for what are the rules? And well, it's like it's like being on why island I'm time. Stressed out. It's more of a, a state of mind. But for the, the listeners that uh, missed the show that we did in the middle of August, we did vote on 12 quarterbacks who would be the original members of Quarterback Island. In my mind, they are the 12 quarterbacks who define the position when you vote for them. And today we're going to decide who stays and who goes. The timing is everything, too, um, as Greg and I have gone back and forth on for the last <laughs> yes. several, several weeks. Um, four game sample size right now. But, Colleen, you should know that you can attach meaning to different quarterbacks based on reputation based on situation that they're in. Quarterback Island is not just a wonderful place, a legitimate geographic location, but also an idea of what to strive for Okay, as a quarterback. All right, yeah, because I'm sitting there and I'm like, well, is this based on their <laughs> performance through the first four weeks of the season? Yes. Is this based on just who they are as a quarterback up until this point, the carryover yes. from yes. before? Oh, yes. Is this, like, but then that gives me, it's a different list for every type of category. Right. I'm going to be fine. So fly, fly free, Colleen. Quarterback free. Island, <laughs> just, just, picture, just picture a body of water. Quarterback Island. my grip? <laughs> Is next to Revis Island, right? Okay. It's bigger. Okay. There we go. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. So I think the first thing we should do is introduce who are on the island. Yes. The, the original. The original 12. Members. And okay. Yes. Uh, let's bring in their names. Patrick Mahomes. Josh Allen. Joe Burrow. This is in no order. Dak Prescott. Jared Goff. Brock Purdy. Jalen Hurts. Matthew Stafford, Lamar Jackson, C.J. Stroud, Jordan Love, and Tua Tungavailoa. And I thought one way to, to start, because what I want to do here, you know, we get, we're, we're four weeks into the season, and it is kind of balancing, like, okay, what they've looked like, what we think um, is their fault, what's not their fault, is I'm going to throw out seven guys right off the top that I think – should just stay on the island. We'll just start okay. there. Okay. That I, I don't know if there's going to be a lot of debate about these guys or either way, but we can talk about these guys either way because they, they deserve to be talked about. Get your so, signs, everybody. So here are my, my seven guys. That we, you can vote at the end. Tell me okay. basically at the end I'm just of these guys, Sorry. That, like if, if you disagree that they should stay on the island. Okay. Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes, Lamar Jackson, Joe Burrow, CJ Stroud, Brock Purdy and Matthew Stafford. Those seven to me should stay on the island. And I was thinking there wasn't going to be a lot of debate about these seven, oh. but I'm already seeing oh. a head shaking over there. Matthew Stafford. What? He's got two touchdown passes. <laughs> He's got as many touchdown passes as Jacoby Brissett. Okay. Let's talk about and it. He's still on the island. Jordan. This is one of the reasons why I wrote him on my on list. Cause I just felt like Jordan, um, covers this man closely. He's already separating himself from and me in the I know. argument. You and res and respects yeah. him a lot. Was like, of course we're keeping Matthew Stafford him, on the island. He's, yeah. You're making a face. And some of the no. some of the analytics aren't great for him. PFF, which is not analytics. It's more of a grading, a play to play. I was shocked they had him like 25th, 26th. Uh, if you look at 
turnover where they play is big time throws. I'm, I was kind of shocked. He had like a three to five ratio of, he hasn't had that many big time throws. I mean, to me, he the has, tape, the tape I thought says he has, I know yeah. that's where, <laughs> where that's why I'm saying none of this is yeah. perfect. There are, you can go by a bunch of different metrics. You can go by the eye test to my eye test. He is still playing at a very high level. I use the same logic that I use to say yes to Brock Purdy being on the Island, just invert the inversion of it which is I'm not going to punish a player who's playing at a high level for what is going on around him. That's if it what, is what one of my so questions dramatic. was, yeah. especially for I'm, Stafford. I'm not going to do that. Some people, and I won't say who, but some people might punish people. For Why are you getting after me? Not. The guy on your uh, left there, Weiss, no, no, is the no, one no. trying to take we're, him off. I got my list of already. on, guys. We're I just said already. Stafford is on. So I, I will say, like, if you if you watch his film. Now, this last game, the, the loss in Chicago, that got a little tricky. There was a couple of big-time drives from him. That throw to Demarcus Robinson in the middle of the field is is one of them. Um, but this situation with Matthew Stafford, I think he's playing, especially in consideration of what's happening around him. He is playing at an extremely high level in consideration of missing Cooper Cup, missing Puka Nakua, having no timing uh, with these guys who are now thrust into the one and two spot, which is a completely different role than they were playing as the three and four. I mean, the sourpuss look on Steve he's White's playing, face no. right he's now. Playing, I gotta he's hear. It. He's gotta playing hear. with a rookie center and a left guard who couldn't even make the team for the first two years after being a third round pick. And there's been so much reshuffling and different game planning. The one constant of this team has been Matthew Stafford's play and Again, difficult day against a great pass defense in Chicago. Should have run the ball more. Um, but they yes. they abso- like absolutely three of the four games, first four games of the season, Matthew Stafford has played at a extremely high level and particularly in consideration of all of the chaos that's going on around him. And, and, and I agree Watch with the all, tape. I agree with all that. Mm. I, agree, and I, watched watched I know you uh-huh. have. <laughs> I went, but he, he's played competitively. He's played well. He's, he's coming to the fight with a butter knife. I'm just saying there's other people who have played better regardless of their circumstance. So right, because if we're not going to punish people for correct. being in good circumstances, we, we maybe can't give too but much I would, credit I if would they're in bad circumstances. There are very few circumstances this bad that have no. started out this bad. In no. week one and week two, that's when they start losing all of their line and all of their receivers. Like This started out terribly immediately. So I, I'm not even comparing the disasters here. I'm more saying this, this quarterback is lifting this offense as much as he can. It feels like, you know, his stay on the Island could be coming to an end. If mm. things yeah. continue in this direction, it's like, he's got a really bad sunburn on the Island. I'm just looking at someone you're, you're going to put off. Okay. I know. He must have and a I know huge list. You're saying Dak. I'm just saying, no, I'm, I, those are just guys. These were supposed to be guys that we didn't need like a long discussion about okay. whether they're on or off. Yeah. And I love that's the one the thing about quarterback island. You never know what controversies are going to pop up that we we jumped <laughs> right into it <laughs> with Stafford. But you may yeah. make a point. And what if I mean, if we got really crazy and things are a little dark there in L.A. right now, I mean, what if he kick, got kicked off Rams Island? That yeah. Would, that would I mean, I'm, I'm just saying, Colleen, I think you bring up a really good point in that it it is like. I think he's on the island. In four games from now, he might not be. And we're we're looking at this four games at a time. White is getting in I'll front of this. I'll bring him back. I'll bring him back. <laughs> you never know. Yeah, he, he could, what, I'll bring him back. Okay, he could way. he could come back uh, if we need to kick someone off here. Uh, but let's let's do an early vote. Everyone, hold up. If you're watching on YouTube, we do have uh, placards uh, that are very tropical. But I want you to say say your vote. I I vote that yes, Stafford stays on the island. I think he's on, yes. but he's on short notice here. This is on turned upside down. So you have a no. They're gonna Correct. send him out okay. for they're gonna send him out for cigarettes in a minute. We have voted you, Steve. <laughs> He's on. Uh, before we move on, just from these guys, because look, this is more than half of QB Island. I, I think they deserve to be talked about. Uh, Colleen, like Mahomes, Purdy, Stroud, Burrow, Lamar, uh, any one of these guys, Josh Allen, like any any one of these guys, kind of stuck out to you this year as someone you've enjoyed watching, doing something surprising. I don't know. You want to give some love to? I mean, if we're going to talk about a quarterback who I've enjoyed watching and who has been surprising, but I don't think he's – it's so hard to say that he's already earned a spot on Quarterback Island, but Jaden Daniels has mm, been – Hold that. Hold so that. Hold that. Hold, hold that. that one. Hold that. Hold yeah, that. I'm talking about from, from this okay. group of guys. I just wanted to give, like, Purdy some love, for instance. Okay. I was about to say, what about his circumstances? We talk about Stafford. 
Purdy's got to be on there for the same reason and the same logic, right? Yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah. And also, he's on it. He's and, on and the I, list. I, I, I was reading, uh, you know, digging a little bit deeper into the the stats on this because he has been. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> because we have been, <laughs> we have been um, discussing Brock Purdy in this context, especially. Oh, what's he going to do when he doesn't have McCaffrey? When he doesn't have he didn't have Kittle for a game? You know, what's he going to do without Debo? It's interesting. So he has a league high eleven hundred thirty passing yards this season, just 26.4% of those yards have come from after the catch. So that's the lowest rate of any qualifying quarterback in a season in the next gen stats era. So remember the conversation about Purdy was get the ball to his playmakers and let them create the yards for him, sort of stat padding, that kind of a yeah. thing. The that was bros. a big argument that, mm-hmm. that year. And, but now he's creating those yards himself to a limited cast um, that includes uh, Brandon Ayuk, who's not does who's not dropping, look like who's Brandon dropping the Ayuk. ball all yeah. the time. Mm-hmm. Right, they, I it's think he is playing, playing the out. best football of his career. I think he's playing top five football. I would agree he, in terms of how he's playing this year. He'd be ahead of a handful of guys on on that are already locked in. Mahomes being one, which is crazy to say. Uh, almost everyone, like he still tops in yards per attempt by like half a yard, which is like okay, the 49ers offense still getting, but just. The eye test, you mentioned the like his air yards for this season. He has a couple hundred more than anyone else in the league. And you can just see it. He's extending plays. He's throwing the ball deep. I think he's gone to another level. So just just shout out to Brock. Brock's Purdy. got an umbrella on the island. I yeah, like it's it. it's yeah. wild. Like a guys, little daquery, guys, you know, I think one thing, <laughs> perhaps <laughs> one thing I think people that were a little bit of a Brock doubters like myself uh, when he was first coming on the scene is like forgetting how young he is that he can develop and continue to improve just like highly touted, you know, players like Joe Burrow can and CJ Stroud love watching him play Mahomes. I just wanted to kind of bring up as part of this exercise. So we all just agreed that he went on, but like, he's not playing that well. He, I thought he had his best game on Sunday. So that helped like solidify. I don't think he would have been at risk going off the Island. He's managed games very well, but like is Patrick Mahomes playing that well. I think you can, take a little bit of the situation out and say, like, I've seen him in bad situations before. And even to that standard, I don't know if he's playing like that. Well, Mm -mm. am I crazy? No. I mean, I think that it's Mahomes. I mean, Lamar and even Burrow with the carryover for me, that's like, Mm. those guys have to stay on the Island because of their body of work. But Obviously, Mahomes has not been the same type of player this year, and it's affecting everyone. I mean, we did see Kelsey get a little bit more involved this week, which was good. But now with Rasheed Rice going down, like they're really going to have to rely on Xavier Worthy f- going forward. And I just it, they're already having issues now as it is. You have to rely on Kareem Hunt. Right. I mean, it was nice to see him go down the field a yeah. little bit. That was actually the longest yeah. touchdown yeah. pass he had had in a long time in terms just of wasn't area. doing that before. No, uh, I just want to give some stats just to put in context. 22nd in completion percentage over expected. This is Patrick Mahomes, 12th in EPA, 11th in success rate, 13th at PFF. I just want to get a broad spectrum that if six touchdowns, five interceptions, 17th in QBR. So if this was someone else, just looking at the statistical right. profile, he would kind of be on the borderline. of Yeah, that's this is the beauty of quarterback island, yes. though, because it, we kind of do grandfather certain players in because that's they they deserve that. They, well, also different. with our eyes, but, he is. Yeah. but we also know he's okay. I have a. You guys tell me if I'm crazy and listen first before you do that. Um, like there's a. I have this weird theory that I've sort of been marinating on about what's going on with the Chiefs' offense right now because they're obviously there's a lot of new receivers and there are a lot a lot of new players and they're trying to figure out how to play the best football that they can, understanding they're probably going down the stretch yet again. My theory, you're seeing some of the underneath stuff. You're seeing some them try different things with different receivers and just different drop back footwork and, and combinations, things like that. I think they're kind of in the middle of onboarding these guys. Like yes. so to where I would you're, agree with that. you're getting them adjusted with specifically Mahomes. You don't need any more reps with Kelsey. Like you, you understand what that what that's going to look like when the time comes for him to really turn the gas. I think on. they look at September so, as trying out. Stuff. Yeah, so that's what I, that's really what I that's my theory of what I think is happening. Now, obviously, you don't want to lose a receiver during that time, and we'll see if they make a move here. But I I think it's really that's sort of my suspicion. Like Andy Reid's in the lab, but like in public in front of everybody right now. Mm, I like that one. I, I, mean, I think that's, that's true. Yeah, that's and their O line play hasn't been great just like last year. I mean, last year they were getting twenty seven penalties a game. They clean that up. I mean, so they'll they'll figure it out, but just not having 
some of these receiving weapons is going to be an issue. Yeah, I think Belichick defensively would use the first part of the season to try a lot of different yeah. things and see who stuck. And now Andy Reid, he's always done that. He did that in Philadelphia. He always I remember did back it. on when I worked at Pro Football Talk, I would say, this guy's the, like, he's like an offensive revolutionary. And everyone hated Andy Reid back then just because he couldn't get over the hump. Now he's finally uh, one of the greatest coaches of all time. Okay, so we've got our seven guys on. Again, Josh Allen, Mahomes, Lamar, Burrow, Stroud, Stafford, Purdy. They're on. We're just, I'm just going to quickly, I just want to mention some guys I don't think are going to be brought up for nomination today. Just, uh, <laughs> okay. just to like give the context of the whole quarterback position. We're not going to go through each team, but Kirk Cousins, it's not going so well in, in Atlanta. Right? No. Um, not going to be talked about. I, I fought for him, so. Yeah, he was on the nope. borderline Aww. last time. I just want to throw out that if you did a blind taste test, there was no num like name on the back of the jersey, and you could say that Andy Dalton's two games would have been four games, and you just watched that quality of quarterback. I think he's someone we, we would talk about. Yeah. Which is, I would agree. Not, not a big enough sample size. Which is like exciting. You know I love Darnold yes. and Dalton. <laughs> so it's very exciting Why? to me that like now all this time later and here we are in the Chris Wesling podcast. You know, what if Andy Dalton, maybe this is the year that he's oh above the Dalton God. scale. No. <laughs> that he's above. It's only two games. Whoa. I don't want to get carried away. Uh, Trevor Lawrence, <laughs> we, we didn't even Ooh. really give consideration. He's one of them, you know, at the bottom of the list yeah. here right now. Ooh. Caleb Williams, I'm going to take the L on pushing for him to yeah. be initially on the quarterback island. I got outvoted. Um, thank you. Good. You saved Good job, me. guys. Uh, Anthony Richardson, obviously struggling. Deshaun yeah. Watson, one of the worst quarterbacks in the league. All right. Let's hold up. Hold up. What about, okay. Derek, what about Derek Carr? Okay. I, I maybe even was going to get him drowning last. Yes. I was even going to maybe was drowning give, last. Yeah. give Derek Carr the respect of maybe we'll even bring him up, even okay. though we kind of know. But no. <laughs> I, I think you're right. I texted Kurt Warner about this because I was what? like, all right, who who would you put on the island? Ooh. And the criteria was performance through the first four weeks. And Carr made the list. Okay. Which I, that was the most surprising to me. Wow. Out of all of I mean, numbers, the numbers are numbers crazy because they're still for me, kind of blown it, yeah. by the first two weeks. And I actually think he's played better than people gave him credit for the last two weeks. He's just been back to being like a good version of Derek Carr instead of crazy good. My thing was the drop was so dramatic. I went through true media filters and I put weeks one to two EPA per drop back and weeks three to four and extrapolated them from each other. And he drops from uh, up at the top, you know, in the top three in weeks one and two to number 16 yeah. uh, through three and mm -hmm. four. That's such a significant swing for me that I, I just couldn't, I couldn't vote him on. Still not, still not too far from the 12 though. No, it, yeah. it's not. Yeah, I mean, test wise. Yeah. I actually think he's playing well. Still gets a little panicked against pressure. So does Jared Goff, a guy we're going to talk about. Like, But for the most part, even the last two weeks where they've lost, I think he's played well enough to win. They needed a touchdown drive at the end of last week's game. They they got one. Is he the new? Dalton scale? Yeah. He, he might be. Oh. We'll see what happens this season. All right. Let's that get. feels like a good fit. Let's though. get to the juicy stuff here before we, we take a break. I want to. Oh, we up. haven't yet? Jeez. <laughs> I'm just saying, now we're really talking about who's okay. going on, who's going off. Uh, let's just kick some guys off to start. I, I think Jaylen we can Hurts. take an immediate vote on Tua Tunga Vailoa, unfortunately. Yeah, the injury. The so it's, it's unfair to him. That's but the do, Jordan rules. Do we yeah. all, do we all, yeah. 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 Not much uh -huh. needs to be so said. Yep. Okay, so Tua is off. Hope he's okay. doing good. Uh, yeah. I'm going to nominate Jordan Love to be kicked off no matter what happens. I agree with you. Let's talk about him first. Let's I talk think about there's him first. just too small of a sample size Correct. so far through through this year. But I so I agree with you on that. I mean, I don't want I want obviously the three interceptions last week. They were bad. And I'm just looking at the one game. But he did play really well against a Brian Flores defense, which no one else has been able to do yet. Uh, the sample size is pretty small, but the comeback on Sunday was furious in the yeah. fourth quarter. Yeah. So if you mm -hmm. could just extrapolate that fourth quarter over all four quarters, um, it would be different, but he's, it's tough. I kind of want to keep him on the Island though. But like, it, it, does he define the quarterback position? My reason for taking him off more than anything is I think the two games he's played has been pretty erratic. I mean, there were weird games. The, the field in, in Brazil, Brazil was weird. And then this game was weird. He's coming off an injury. He didn't look a totally 100%, but the accuracy was kind of all over the place. So even just judging on those two games, to me, that's not quarterback island material. And then he he's not Mahomes. He's, he doesn't have the the history either. So Okay, I, is it I fair, though, to judge him on one complete game, like one game that he has started and finished? He can, it's, he can it's get it off. part of the Jordan rules here. I'm, I'm, I'm introduced. 
Jordan said, if you've got an injury, is that a bus? That is that a bus somewhere? Yeah, Jordan is. Yes. It is <laughs> kind of like, uh, you know, Jordan. it is kind of like one of those actors who also have executive executive producer credit. Like she's Jeff Probst now. Like she's cashing <laughs> so many different checks here. She came up with the rules, and yeah, I think the injury and just a little erratic. Guys have played better than him for the time he's been out there. Can so are we all in agreement to vote? I, just no. I think it's unfair. What? Okay, Colleen's I, voting yes. I like that. I think she knows she was outvoted. It was a safe I yes. I'm. I understand how this is going to sound, but I'm holding on for love <laughs> to make it in the next four games. Okay. I think. Yeah. I think that's absolutely fair. Jordan Love could return. He's going to prove me right. He can see so. me after week eight. He All can right. See me after week eight. Him, Matt Stafford. <laughs> All right. We are going to take a, a quick break here. Uh, seven guys are on the island. Two have been voted off. Okay. And, you know, we're not inhumane here. They're going on a nice little sea cruise together and Some of uh, them. heading back to the mainland. To uh, in Jordan Love. When we come back, uh, we will talk about who is coming onto the island. Some of the toughest discussions of who might get booted off. Back on Quarterback Island place every quarterback wants to be when they're little kids they grow up and they say i want to move there someday that is the absolute pinnacle of the profession forget the hall of fame forget, forget lambo winning super bowls uh, you just want to be in that group because it's more want- it's more attainable frankly i mean these poor guys josh allen and stroud it's like Mahomes doesn't let him win any Super Bowls, but you can get on quarterback island. Like an overwater bungalow would be like, that's what everyone is trying to. A nice little Bora Bora move. Exactly. I like that. Uh Like who's like the sneaky MVP just in terms of vibes on the island, do you think? Oh, Mahomes for sure. He really brings the, the beer too. Hmm. I could see that. I feel like Josh Allen is kind of like Josh fun. Allen's in charge of the board game. Yeah. Yeah. See, Mahomes, <laughs> no Lamar, offense Lamar to Mahomes. Is super fun. I was going to say like Mahomes are, would be low on my list of like. You guys are completely missing it. Who? Joey Burrow. Yeah. That's. Oh, oh yeah. Oh. Yeah. You're right. Come on, Joe Shiesty. You're yeah. right. I was thinking that's a good one. Burrow and Lamar would. would Lamar. Vibe. Lamar. Lamar for Allen. sure. Like, they'd be fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, they'd all be trying to like impress Lamar just by being cool and stuff. All right. <laughs> let's. Uh. Let's go to um, guys we want to nominate onto the island. To go on the island. I think so. Unless we want to talk about, unless anyone wants to talk about guys that we definitely want to boot off. I think all of these no, let's, guys let's nominate, moving let's forward nominate, let's do the math. is, is going to be contingent. Right now we have two open spots. So I think if we, first thing we can do is put two guys onto the island. Like mm. they, there are two open spots. So I will leave the, the floor to who it's, it's like Congress. He's just whoever jumps in and wants to nominate. <sighs> All right. That's um, how Congress works, right? Yeah, it is. So I'm sure of it, right? It's just like Judge Connie. It works. The, it all works the same <laughs> way. Um, I nominate Baker Mayfield. Baker Whoa. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love uh-huh. it. Thank you. Yes. I love it. Baker Mayfield, who is constantly doubted, is constantly kind of one of those guys where people almost forget about him when they're talking about quarterback play. He has been unbelievable this year and he absolutely deserves a spot on quarterback Island. When you look at the other guys that are on here that are like Jalen hurts. uh, I mean, Baker Mayfield, 1000% has been better than hurts. So he's on eight touchdowns, two interceptions. He's got 106.9 pass rating that puts him in the top five. Mm. Plus his team is leading the division. I I think, Hey, Baker gets serious. I think the I think the the propeller boat is is pushing towards okay. the island. Okay. Sometimes early in these discussions, you want to put everyone on okay, the but, island, but, but no, we okay, just have correct, a lot of other players okay, to I, get through. Can I state the obvious yes. one? Sam Darnold. Okay. Well, let's okay. let's get through the Baker thing first. She put okay. him up for nomination. All right. So if if we want to table the vote for Baker until later, we we can. I think the negatives would be he played one of the worst games I've seen any quarterback play. Yes. In week three. Sure. Right. And he's Baker Mayfield. And so we've seen the ups and the downs. Hold up. He's Very had more streaky. ups than downs. In his career, there's been ups, there's been downs. You hit him with Andy's Baker Mayfield. Yeah. I, what, I, what I mean to say is that if you're going to get a spot on the island and you've had a career that's been up and down and you have limitations as a quarterback, I need you to be red hot. I need you to be closer to what Sam Darnold is. I need you to not have that week three blemish kind of dragging down some of the numbers in some of my He's second in the league in passing touchdowns. 
Isn't okay. that a good metric if you're measuring quarterbacks passing touchdowns? It's okay. I mean, I definitely prefer others. He just misses the island in terms of EPA per drop back at mm. 13. Okay. However, however, like I got to tell you guys, this when this guy wills a win, I, it's yes. hard to find people yes. who will yeah. a team the way that when he goes into like darkness mode into his brain, it does remind me. I mean, they're not the same at all. It reminds me of a Stafford mm. kind of goes full on like serial killer. Like I'm going to scratch and claw and fight my way and steal souls for this win. But Baker does it in this way. That's like, I'm going to put my body on the line for it also. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, I, I can understand why he has been nominated for quarterback Island um, because I've not seen there. That's just that extra special little it factor for a competitor. Um, but that, that game was also one of the, I mean, that was, I, I also am using my gut, my eye test, and yeah, I just think I think he has he has limitations where he's close, he's on the list, but to to put him right on. So let's let's, let's, table. Ta let's table, okay, him table him until we get. To some I'll others. just say that he is the FedEx Air uh, Player of the Week, so he could be taking that plane to the island. <laughs> <laughs> I love that for him. Uh, but yeah, to your point, seventeenth uh, in completion percentage over expected. He's around tenth, eleventh, like an EPA and stuff. And and but I think they're doing a good job coaching around him. And not it, they're playing with his limit. I think he just has some limitations where I want to get to some guys who maybe have have fewer limitations. Okay, so let's put okay. the slam dunk as Sam Darnold. Okay, if, if we're talking to Sam Darnold, I am a full freaking yes. On yeah, Sam I mean, Darnold. come on, Sam yeah. Darnold. I mean, come on. But look at Rosie. What are you? You're come talking on, about Greg. limitations. Let us hear it. I well, I wanted to find out how many talk about the picks. How many and the fumble? How many spots are open? First of all. Like, we don't know. For for now, only two spots are open. Would he be the in my top two of guys to put onto the island that are available? He has to. No, he I, wouldn't. Oh, what? I have a question. What, are like, you putting anyone it? on the island? Let's frame yeah. it. Let's frame it. This is Greg Island now. This, this is a deserted let's... island. <laughs> 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 oh, my God. <laughs> Nobody wants to be there. It's Bots just are like, bad. It's just like playing, like. Mitski and he doesn't think you know ball like Julian Greg Baker. And <laughs> okay, Greg, just let, like let a me, let Gino <laughs> highlight reel on repeat. That's right. <laughs> not to even, not even Gino so wants to be there. That's why he's fighting so hard. Gino's, Gino's like, this Gino's is like, weird, bro. I'm a little uncomfortable. Uh huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> Greg, let's let's reframe it though. Okay. The argument, like, okay, would you rather put uh, either Dak or Jalen Hurts over this first four game stretch? Over Sam Darnold, because we're actually looking at now t taking spots at this point. We're not just looking at, which I know that's where Steve and I are coming from. And, uh, you know, we're not just looking at taking spots now. We're looking or open spots now. We're looking at who will this person potentially replace? Because we're yeah. almost full. Well, and who I, I think we're taking off, we're taking off two Tua of? and, Lo and love. love. And we're going to go okay. through the guys. Maybe we'll do that of who else could possibly be booed. I think. Darnold is is a nuanced conversation. I think his history matters to me more. And he, is he sort of defining the quarterback position this year? That that's where he wins me over a little bit. Whereas I think he's one of the stories of the year, one of the teams of the year. Do I trust that he's going to be on in four weeks? I don't necessarily. I I don't think it's crazy to look at what he's done and think that he's playing really well. Um, and the situation has helped him out a lot. And on a throw to throw basis, it hasn't necessarily been like special. Uh, he, he's fumbled four times. That's second in the league. I think that's significant. He's, he has three interceptions. Like if you project those over a course of a season, that's a lot of fumbles. That's a lot of interceptions, which has been an issue for him over the years. He's great in all the efficiency stats. So he would be on the Island easily with most of the efficiency stats. But I think, I look at it a little more sometimes like PFF does, which is like a grade on a play to play basis. Like how many pluses, how many minuses they have them. They have them 16th at, at quarterback. So it's not me saying that or 13th in terms of passing. And that's probably where I would have him that he's probably playing around t 10 to 13, the numbers and the story help. Uh, but the history hurts. And that's why to me, he's sort of on the borderline as I want to see how many guys get kicked I, off and guys get on. I get it. But you're talking about projections. So that means you're saying, okay, well, Justin Herbert, by the end of the season, time too. he should, he should be on like, like you're, you're looking, if you're talking about projections, I mean, you could throw two on back on there. No, you're looking at projections. I'm saying even so far, I would not have him in my top like eight quarterbacks or something. He, he'd be, he doesn't have to be in the top eight. Right, to be in the top 12. 12. But then, see, when you're getting to the netherworld, I do consider, like, well, how talking... good do I think these players actually are and how are they playing? All right, I'll show yeah. All right, so we do a Sam Darnold vote. 
because I, you know where I am on Sam. I vote no. I vote yes. He's on the island. He wants to keep a spot open for Gino so I, uh, bad. <laughs> Darnold is on the island. I definitively <laughs> don't it. think that you can describe the first four games of quarterback play in the 2024 mm-hmm. NFL season without bringing up Sam Darnold in the top three sentences you use to describe quarterback play in 2024 specifically, which is what this topic is about. Yeah. I see even then. <laughs> hey, she, she stood on business. It's ended Shut right you there. down. It's ended right there. I'm standing on tiny I'm, table island. <laughs> I don't know. I, I would say that, that it's, it's a team story, and you can separate things that the oh. offensive line, the running oh. game, and the defense. Oh. Oh. All more. Right. That's it. I Let's went through it all. One. I said he's somewhere in that mix. I was open minded. I assumed he would get on initially, but I wanted to see who gets kicked off. So Darnold is on. The island. Maybe we should talk about the guys that are, are going <laughs> off. Actually, this is why I was stressed out yeah. about this exercise. I need an organization. Who else? Who else? So there's there's just one more open spot, right? We've kicked yeah. off two. Yeah. So Sam takes one of those. So who do you think should get the next one? Gino. Exactly. Okay. Yep. Leads the he's, like, he's like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We're good. But We're no, good. I want to have like a long conversation. Oh god. It. No, uh, <laughs> it, it was really Gino cool. Gino Island is of where yeah. you go to do that. It was cool. Just watching him in that offense, what what stood out to you in the Monday night performance and sort of how he fits in that Ryan Grubb About offense? Gino? Yeah. Oh, besides the 300 texts I sent you about this. is, <laughs> I was like, I'm watching this game. I'm so happy. And this must be what you feel like all the time, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> what is that like? Um, yeah, I, I think he fits so well in this system because you can clearly see how much to do Ryan Grubb is giving him. Mm-hmm. He has so much autonomy and responsibility. Basically, I, I love a, t- a collaboration like this between an OC and a quarterback because the, the OC basically sets the table, lays out the steak knife and the tiny salad fork and two different cups and one plate and three bowls and says, all right, man, <laughs> we got the spacing down. I've got the spacing. Now you do what you want with everything else and you choose how you're going to run the motions. You get, I mean, unfortunately, he's got to get the line set every dang play, which is like not, should not be happening. Correct. Um, and the line has been atrocious, but somehow he is rising past all of that. And this dude is spinning the that's, freaking he really ball. is. Yes, he that's really, the main really thing is. For me. Yeah. I mean, it's just pretty. I mean, I'm looking around the NFL and I'm seeing quick game, quick game, quick game, quick game. I am seeing every throw of his going 20 yards somewhere on the field from the numbers to inside the hashes. He is drilling it. And you saw last night, I mean, he is navigating through a bunch of garbage in the pocket and he is still making these stick throws. So. He is playing at at a. He's Were you rooting high against them on Monday night? Because we we clearly felt that Goff and Gino were showing out because they knew Quarterback Island was was taping right after that oh, this oh, week, uh, and they wanted to impress. Were you rooting against or for Gino? Because I know you're rooting for Darnold well, in I'm, a way because you don't really like me. That and then you have to. Were you rooting against? I'm Gino always rooting for Geno Smith. Oh. I, I feel like, yeah, I, I like to see him succeed, but I was rooting against him last night because I picked the Lions. Mm. Uh, but Kenneth Walker, I feel like he was oh just like God. the guy that they, they could not stop him. He just kept coming back. They, they stopped him in the first half. Over, yeah. yeah. And if they hadn't turned the ball like DK Metcalf, they hadn't mm-hmm. turned it over early like that. Who knows? I mean, their script, they could have stayed on their A-plus script. Mm-hmm. Like, who knows what could have happened yeah. near the end of that game. That was an electric game um Gino Smith had already solidified though to me mm. even from the jump um sure. once which I is why you got to look past QB rating I, I, he has four touchdowns four interceptions this season like that can be such a misleading stat if you've watched him every week that Miami game I thought he played awesome so he's on he he's number one in this stat which is called on target rate just throws over 10 yard 95 percent of his yeah, throws he drives on target the league average is 75 reminds me uh, a lot of one of my favorites Philip Rivers I mean he throws it prettier than Philip Rivers, but just how he navigates the pocket and the, he stays and the calm ball just Phillip gets Rivers the yeah. intermediate. <laughs> yeah. Philip Phil was the man first three quarters. <laughs> Don't get it. <laughs> okay. Um, so we've we've put two guys on the island. Okay. Gino right. and Sam Darnold. What a season that they're on the island wow. 2024. That is 2024. Okay. Let's talk about maybe some guys that could also get kicked off and some guys we didn't talk about. There's only a few left over. Stafford, uh, is on the island. For now. There's three players that are, I guess, in the maybe category that are on the island, uh, but we should talk about. Jared Goff was flirting with uh, getting booted before last night. Was right, last night's that. performance, uh, was Monday night's performance enough to keep where Jared Goff is is at? What do you, what do you think, Cully? Was he on Kurt Warner's list? You know what? 
I believe he <laughs> was. He was. Okay. And, G- loves and Gino was on Kurt his loves list him. too. Okay, good. He knows ball. Uh huh. <laughs> now, now he finally it's it's certified. I mean, it's he official. Is, he is the Hall of Fame. He's in. <laughs> he's joining Greg on Gino. That was Island a joke. That was a Israel. joke. <laughs> it was a joke. Okay, so coming after you now. Do you? Do we all vote yes on Jared Goff staying on quarterback yes. island? Yes. Yes. I want to. I want to back this up with a number two because I did the same extrapolation weeks one and two versus uh-huh. weeks three and four because I thought he started to play. You could start to see him play better. Um, weeks three and four EPA per drop pack was actually at number three. Um, mm. So and and he didn't really even throw the ball that much. It was perfect, but he didn't throw the ball that much to dramatically skew up his average right now. Is number is EPA per drop back is at number nine. That's system. So is, yeah. So you know it's it's I I think that's significant that he jumped that high despite a small sample size in even though it was perfect mm-hmm. a small sample size. Uh, on and Monday night. and he didn't have Frank Ragnow out there. Yes, either. right. Had a touchdown. Exactly. And these weren't all oh, short. These too. weren't all short throws no. either. So yeah. No. yeah, you have it. You throw a perfect game on Monday Night Football and you were already <laughs> on the island like that. Those first three weeks would have had to been total disaster against that second. And they were, yeah, I mean, and, and they yeah. weren't they weren't that bad the first three weeks. A little panicked under pressure sometimes, but uh, the Seahawks some, were missing. A lot of their guys. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we five, are five, four okay. starters, and then Julian Love. The safety uh-huh. got hurt. Let's have the yeah. Jalen Hurts convo. Your your dude. Um, weird oh season. God, it just continues. It, he, just, it never got any better from the end of last year. The only upside is Saquon Barkley. If they didn't sign him, I don't know where they would be. But Jalen Hurts, they just can't move the ball. It, it, on Sunday, the Eagles had zero yards of offense until six minutes in the second quarter. Zero. And then the turnovers, they just keep happening. He has 27 turnovers over his past 20 starts dating back to last season. So mm. you could say, all right, there's that's almost a dart on like, yeah. yeah, right. You could <laughs> get mm. uh, <laughs> this dude. <laughs> you could say that there is some type of disconnect between there obviously is a disconnect between the players and the coaching staff, but maybe between Jalen Hurts and Kellen Moore. But a lot of these issues were happening before Kellen Moore got there. So I, I don't know what is going on and how they can fix it, but he's got to get off the island. Well, yeah. I mean, if A.J. Wow. Brown comes back, they can. Right. I mean, they're better. missing. I mean, that would help. Lane missing four weeks. Two, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's confusing. He, like, they are, he is so emblematic of that team. You, maybe you take on the personality of your leaders and, and Hurts and Sirianni are a little all over the place because, I swear if you just have watched every snap, he's done a lot of good things this year. He's made a lot of plays out of nothing. He's made a lot of clutch drives, for lack of a better word. I know that game against Tampa was, you know, pretty rough. That week two game, he was in general, but he wasn't like their problem. Like their defense has been a total like trash can for three out of four games. And he's done some good things, but then you have to grade the turnovers and like the, the big, t- like the turnover worthy plays. I, I think he has the second most in the league to, to Will Levis. And it's been a little all over the place where you don't know what to think. And he's, he's not, he's not in that burrow or Mahomes tier where I'm going to forgive it completely. Yeah. Will Levis is on quarterback Saturn right now. Oh, poor Will. Oh, yeah. Bless his heart. yeah. I, um, I, I, I think Jalen's on the raft with Wilson. The dinghy came, picked them up. <laughs> Bill Barnwell had one of my favorite tweets of the year he said why does will levis always look like an actor who's playing quarterback in a movie <laughs> no. <Ooh. laughs> like but it's not like That's a pretty good no one. i mean it's not even i don't think an insult but when he's on the side like he just he's I don't expressive know. he feels it, his feelings it wasn't like taking a huge shot but but yeah i guess he was kind of playing like an actor too i am gonna vote oh no God. on jalen hurts you go I'm going to yeah. vote no on Jalen Hurts. He's gone. He's gone. And the reason I'm doing that, and because I like to do a one-to-one thing here, uh, you mentioned your guy from the Commanders before, Jaden oh, Daniels. God you want to officially yes. nominate him. Oh, my gosh. Jaden Daniels. Okay. Are you kidding me? 82.1 completion percentage, 897 passing yards, three touchdowns. Obviously, that's not that much. But he's also running scores in as well. He's Four of them. fantastic. I mean... And all of his runs, I feel like so many of his runs go for first downs, too. So he's making good decisions. He's making good reads. He's just doesn't look like a rookie quarterback at all. And I know Cliff Kingsbury is putting him in a great position, but it feels like Cliff Cliff Kingsbury is doing things a little different than he had done in Arizona. A thousand percent. With Kyler Murray. And this just works. This marriage is so perfect. I'm loving Jaden Daniels. Yeah, I like it. You you mentioned it the other day on the preview show, Greg, about what they're doing with the offensive line 
and how structurally it just looks so much more sound than we thought it was going to look around Jaden Daniels. We were worried about the offensive line coming in. We were worried about the skill players. We were worried about some of the structure of the run game. All of it is it's not it's not overshadowing him by any way. It, it is supporting him in the best and purest way possible where they have layers to this offense and he can compete at every single one of these layers within this offense. And I think, I think he's brilliant. He is a joy to watch. I think this is where having Anthony Lynn as the run game coordinator mm-hmm. back Good, yeah. really Good helps, call. right? Yeah. So this, yeah. this helps some of the run protections because you know, Cliff, he loves having screaming free runners coming at his quarterback, even on that beautiful touchdown pass to scary Terry. That was a clean yeah. blitz off the corner. It's a risk. Bengals, but he saw it coming. And speaking to a you know a coach on that staff there, he will tell you, he's like, look, in practice, we tried to trick him in training camp. We ran double three techniques, right? So they played their defensive tackles wide. He said he saw it, saw two inside linebackers. He moved a running back out to make sure the linebacker followed the running back. So now the middle of the field is wide open, and he calls a quarterback draw. Mm. He's like, the awesome. fact that a rookie quarterback saw this two or three weeks into training camp, recognized everything. So that's all the football he's played collegiately. He's been coached well. Dan Quinn told me he's got that 24-hour key fob. He can get to the building whenever he wants to mm. study and do all that stuff mm-hmm. uh, that he wants to do. So I don't think to the people in that building this is really coming as a surprise. But to me, I'm ready to give him a gold jacket because he has a commander. <laughs> no, no, he has a commander <laughs> at three and first one. Place. At, at three, at first place, even for a minute, what that organization yeah. has been yeah. through. Yeah. I mean. Uh, I... He, he is the man of the moment. It's why I, I think we're going to be unanimous. We're all voting yes. Jaden Daniels, welcome to the island. First ever rookie yes. on Quarterback Island. Wow. You gotta it's bring, an honor. You got to bring the beers, I guess. I don't know what, what they do on oh, Quarterback Island. No, they're, they're bringing them to him. Yeah, he gets he gets served. I thought it was really interesting. I read uh, Terry McLaurin was talking about how Jaden Daniels is this like calming, confident force in the building. And I guess they had missed each other on a connection week one and that Jaden Daniels kept coming over to Terry McLaurin throughout the week. And he was like, just be patient. I'm coming to you. I'm coming back to you. And was like almost like talking him down, like like, everything's going to be fine. Don't worry. And it's like that doesn't feel like a rookie quarterback move. He just yeah. seems like he's a wise, sage quarterback That's in a rookie's body. Awesome. They, <laughs> you know, once the, once his teammates started understanding like how he operates, it's been really fun reading some of the reports out of there because he just would like experiment with things and try things. And I mentioned it a couple weeks ago. He was like, what does this lover do? Oh, that's fun. I got hit, but Hey, we're all having like, I'm, I feel joy, you know, all these things. And it just, he's just like this brightness. And once they uh-huh. realized kind of that, Oh, he's not actually making mistakes because he's making mistakes innocently. Like he's making mistakes on purpose to try to figure out what works and what doesn't. And he's doing it with this personality and this joy. And then you're seeing, that was all summer. And you're seeing what translates out of that. His team is with him 100% and they're they're for him and they can collaborate and do those things on the Mm -hmm. sideline like that because they had that experience already and they really looked shocked though. Like no one saw this coming that they, they are one of the best offenses in NFL history through one month, like for the first month of play, they are one of the best offenses we've ever seen. Now I do think it's fair to point out he was unanimous. The only reason I was even pushing on Darnold before is like, I just wanted to make sure that we get guys like Jaden Daniels on, which were definitely ahead on on my list. And that once we got through it and hurts, this makes sense. But, uh, I do think it's important to point out they've had an incredibly easy schedule in terms of the defenses that they face. And so the numbers will go, I think, from stratospheric to, okay, let's see against some better defenses. I'm excited uh, to see that. But but here's why I don't think, I'm sorry, there's going to be just uh, the significant crash. No, I don't think so. He's not one of these rookie quarterbacks who's got to always play in the shotgun, right? right? He's not one of these guys. They line him up under center in the pistol, in the gun, offset. So he's he's got a pretty good breadth of how to play the position from a lot of different ways, which is going to make it tough to develop whatever you want to call it, the film on him, so to speak, because I think he's just got a lot of operational tools. Okay, we haven't uh, talked about Dak Prescott at all. I think if we're going to talk about Dak, if you want to kick him off the island, you got to propose someone uh, to put on. Justin Fields, to me, we... we you know, it's not quite quarterback island material, no. but it's playing outstanding. So just giving him a little love. Uh, does anyone have someone they want on the island over Dak? Any Dak thoughts here? Ooh, that's a tough one. 
I mean, I, I'm I'm really strong on Baker, but Dak would be real tough. He he is not the Cowboys' problem. Mm-mm. No, I'm it, not. I wouldn't put Baker on for Dak. There, Aaron Rodgers. I think going into Week Four, this might have been a different conversation because I think he's Good played. Thing we waited to four games. Huh? Yeah, yeah. But even then, like, <laughs> I, it it really is stuck in our head. When I went back and watched that game, I actually did not think Aaron Rodgers played nearly as bad as I would have expected. I, I agree. I think he was a veteran quarterback like Stafford in a very difficult situation. If you had to, if I had to say, like, who has played better this year, Stafford, for instance, or Rodgers, I would go Stafford, but it's actually pretty close. Mm-hmm. I think Rodgers is playing good football, and so... Rodgers playing good football, not being on quarterback island, like that's a tough decision. He's very on the borderline for me. Okay, I've got one for you then. Since we're trying to play, who's are either those those guys playing as well as Kyler Murray? Mm-hmm. They're one in three, but Kyler. I have a hard time with Kyler because I got to watch in person probably one of the best games he's ever played, and it was absolutely outstanding. I mean, he looked. I was like, make him president of quarterback <laughs> Island at this point. It was uh, outstanding, but I just, I have a hard time. He's, you know, I think the defense is obviously dragging him down. I'm like I said, I'm not punishing players for not being able to overcome certain like catastrophic surroundings. That defense looks uh, bad to, to put it politely, but I, I was ready to like, as you guys know, I was ready to like crown this Arizona offense as like the future Right. And it's just not coming together in a cohesive way. And in the run game more than yeah, the passing and, game. I expected he, him to be more a part of the I run game. He He's was, run well, I but not he was a going ton. to be more involved on a weekly basis, not just in that, you know, that game against the Rams. I thought he's going to be more involved on a weekly basis in the run plan. He's not. I think he's holding the ball a little bit sometimes. It's just it's a. It's a straight, the receiver trust doesn't quite seem to be, I think for, for valid reasons, some streaky, a little bit of streaky play is including from the top guy on that team. So I just think that it's, I didn't know what to do with him. I didn't know what to do with him, but I wasn't willing to swap him out over some players who I think have played consistently unbelievable ball. He's sort of just on the, on the ferry that might be he's in transit for <laughs> the island, but he's hanging out with Rogers where, yeah, he's just like right there. That would be what a weird, what do you weird, think they're talking about? That would be a weird <laughs> duo. <laughs> Well, They're both a little like, left. Kyler, <laughs> Kyler's like, hey, man, did you see what I sh- shot in that game there? Yeah, little video games. I don't think <laughs> Rodgers is a gamer. The numbers are better than maybe the last two games I test uh, would say. Like Murray, ninth in EPA per drop back, sixth in completion percentage over expected. Uh, I think he'd look good through two weeks. He certainly would have had a strong case. He's right. held the ball quite a bit the last couple of weeks. Don't think he's played... Awful, but that game against a pretty bad commander's defense, uh, that sunk his chances. Yeah. So wow. maybe Dak's safe. We, we're we not putting Carr on. We No one nominated Rodgers. Wow. Rodgers would add different vibes to the thing, Yeah, that, that game last yeah. week. I think he's had one vintage Aaron Rodgers game so far and hasn't quite looked fully himself in, in the other. I three. would agree with that. And yet he's, yeah. Ba- I, based on the other guys ahead of him. Okay. That, that was, that's that was fair. My, 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 cause he's scale. like above the Dalton line as we're mixing different podcasts, different ways of right. valuing quarterbacks. Like I think throughout he's been a big time asset to their team. The second half of the Titans game, he was fantastic. It wasn't like the complete game. Uh, and so it's, it's actually kind of hard for me to leave him off. Cause I, I feel like he could get better over the course of the season. Oh, you were quick to leave him off the week, the first yeah. time. I know, what? but now I saw it again. Because I was... reverse memory well, that we're having here? It's like someone put the MIB... You can, you can change your opinions based on new information. Okay. I appreciate good football. Right. I think he's playing pretty good, but I wouldn't put him on either. Over Dak. What I would, Stafford? After you? I, would pro- Stafford? I would probably put him on over Darnold. Uh, oh, my but, God. But, you know, that's what I mean. That's what I mean. four games of the season... It's oh. no, it's close. I mean, it's that's close. a total it's close. That's a total. How about rough. Justin Herbert never came up? Uh, he's I healthy can't. now. He's I playing. I mean, he's sort of he's, healthy. He, he's so tough and he's so competitive. And this is one where I think you really have to factor in circumstance besides the injury. Yeah. He has got nobody to go downfield. I feel no. bad for him because he is such a gamer. I mean, I love watching him play. And right now he just has nothing They're They're not in terms of in the past game. They're easy to defend. Just in terms of teams, no, they they don't have anyone who's going to go downfield on them. Yeah, he's thrown for fewer than two hundred yards mm. in all four games. Like, he, he never had back to back games like that in his career, and this is not, like he just 
he doesn't look like the same quarterback because of the system that he's in and because of like the skill position players around him. He looks so much better than the numbers. And the numbers like touchdown interception looks good, five to one. But you look at QBR every week. I go to you know hate watch QBR and see if Watson's on the bottom. Yep, dead last in the NFL. And uh, but then I always notice Herbert's like barely above him, like five spots above him. Wait a second. Wait a second. There's something yeah. called I like, watch. I like I don't hearing know. about I'm your hobbies, joking. Greg. I'm totally joking. I just am <laughs> saying that because I happen to notice that it's Watson here at the bottom. What uh, else are you uh, hate watching? Uh, sometimes you'll watch like a. A movie that's so bad it's good. It's My not text. really hate. No. <laughs> Your text. <laughs> I mean, our listeners of NFL Daily, you guys hate watch teams. I mean, it's yeah. It's kind of like uh, I, Bomani Jones, who has a great podcast. Yes. He he said like he gave up like rooting for some of his college football teams, but he still roots against all the all old ones. Like it's fun to hate on certain teams. It's fun to root root against teams. Um, I. Colleen's from Philly. She's got a long list. Yeah. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Start naming like every, every team in the league <laughs> aside from the Eagles. It's no. us against them. <laughs> Nobody yeah. likes us. I, I thought things were going downhill with, with Justin Herbert. It's like week two, week three, and l- the local column, the columnist there at the Athletic, Daniel Popper, is already having to write stories that say, who will protect Justin Herbert from himself? I mean, that's, yes. yeah. that's a sign of a bad, bad way right now. So I think we've done it. I think I, we've got our 12. I think we've decided wow. uh, <laughs> who has list. made. It's funny, the ones that we've just not Quarterback mentioned at all. <laughs> island. Well, who, who else did we need to mention? We, we don't we, need to mention anyone. I'm just saying it's funny. Yeah. Subconsciously, the people, I know you, Greg, the subconsciously, the people you just completely left off. Well, that they weren't in contention. Like we talked to Carr, who was you know, close enough, but yeah. not close at all. I, I think we hit every name at least quickly uh, that had a chance. There were no other nominations. Mm-mm. And yeah. Let's let's uh, go through it again. Okay. The members of Quarterback Island after four weeks of the NFL season. Dak is still on. Dak's on. Wasn't Should sure. I thought, yeah. I thought someone was going to make a case against Dak. I wasn't no. sure. No. He's, no. Jared Goff is on. Matthew Stafford is on. Brock Purdy is on. Josh Allen is on. Lamar Jackson. Joe Burrow. CJ Stroud. Patrick Mahomes. We've added three new members to Quarterback Island. Geno Smith, Jaden Daniels, and Sam Darnold are on Quarterback <laughs> Island. See, I might have heard it. What a group of three. They hate it. He was it. like, the gritted teeth. <laughs> we never got back to your guy, Baker. but uh, Ooh, Baker, I want him on. Baker, uh, I want time. him on. Another time. Next time. You, you have a Four chance. Four weeks. It's a game of, uh, of skill. Quarterback Island. If you play well enough, we recognize you. Let's take a quick break. We we got to do some nudes. Wasn't expecting to, Woo! but we got a doozy when we got into the studio. Back in a second. Back on NFL Daily. Didn't think we were doing news today, and we got a again. whopper. Let's do some news. Uh, Devontae Adams has informed the team that he prefers to be traded according to our insiders, Ian Rappaport and Mike Garofolo. Uh, The news comes on the same day that Antonio Pierce was noted to uh, like a social media post suggesting it's that Antonio Adam Pierce's account could be traded. I oh, this is yeah. so messy. It's probably what I'll say too. It so is messy. crazy to have a coach liking comments like I'm that. I'm sure that he was hacked, guys. Part of the story. It doesn't matter now because it's it's just out there. It, this thing is moving quickly. Yes, it would seem if all the insiders are reporting that he he wants to be traded. Uh, ESPN. Adam Schefter already throwing out some possible terms, uh, a conditional second and maybe escalating quickly something else. I'd consider it. Right. Which I think <laughs> we've been around long yeah. enough that if that's being thrown out there, what they're, they're trying to negotiate through the media, they already have something maybe not quite as good in their pocket and seeing if they can do better. Steve, what do you think? Well, unless somebody with the jets is saying, we'll give them a conditional second. Cause you know, that's going to be the speculation out for him to get back with Aaron Rodgers. And frankly, if you're the jets right now with your season, the way it is, you do it. Oh yeah. This is a, this is a last ditch season for the jets. So you go out there and you do it. That's unless a team, I'm going to give you a couple teams that I think should probably make a move like this. I think the Atlanta Falcons mm-hmm. should go ahead and make a move like this. They need 
that type of receiver and that type of veteran on this roster to go ahead and add something to this. I think they want to get him out of the AFC if possible. But I mean, this is this is a situation where I think the 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 uh, the Falcons and the Jets should go ahead and say, let's play ball. Because you know that no one needs it more than the Chiefs, but they're not going to trade him to Kansas City. A second round pick is not a crazy. And, I mean, and, Muhammad and, and Sanu got traded for a second round pick in a similar situation to the Patriots. Devontae Adams looked great in, yes. in week two, plays week three, finishes the game, doesn't play week four, and then this all pops out. He he was on Kay Adams' show on FanDuel and said, you know, that. Uh, he didn't know about the Antonio period. It just seems like this is a, all systems are firing and it doesn't seem like it's just from Adams. It seems like it's maybe from both. Don't, sides. don't forget now the like came sometime between business decisions Ooh. and him not playing as well. Ooh. Right. Remember you cannot forget that. I'm not saying that Antonio Pierce was including him in the business decisions, but things are kind of uh, nuclear. The connecting of the dots yeah. here. I, we but need I'll, a Detective Weish segment. <laughs> we yeah, do. No. No. Weish no, just out there sleuthing around. Get myself fired. This is something, though, that was talked about in the summer. Like, this is yeah. not anything new that teams were approaching the Raiders and trying to propose trades for Devontae Adams, and the Raiders supposedly turned them away. And so now they're in this situation yeah. where Devontae Adams is clearly unhappy and they need to figure it out. Yeah, and every, every team calls on every big player like this. I mean, it's but this is this was serious to your point, Colleen, to the point where one of those teams was like leaking that uh -huh. that they were doing it in order to sort of stoke the fire. Oh, is there something going on there? Something that you have to address before the first day of the season begins in a, in a press conference? Are, are there different things like just continuing to rekindle, 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 rekindle? It would not surprise me if this has been going on and this conversation has been happening with the front office and the coaching staff for several weeks now. Mm. And getting out in front of it would be to say, oh, I'd prefer to be traded. Maybe even longer, too. We know how. And getting out in front of it from a coach might yeah. be saying the guy's making business. Well, know, you knows. know, and also, I don't think Gardner Minshew's coming to quarterback island. No. Oh, we didn't even mention him. Let me ask, <laughs> let me ask you this, Jordan, <laughs> just, just out of curiosity. Yeah. Are the Rams confident enough in Cooper Cup and Puka Nakua's health not to get involved in making a move like this? I don't put anything past the Rams in terms of um, – making splash moves, especially maximizing what could be a, a final year before Stafford comes right. back to the negotiation table. Um, I also wouldn't put it past them blowing everything up if it went continued to go south. Correct. However, like this is one of those things where you can't actually seriously say as a team that you are depending on the health of an, a receiver that hasn't made it through a full season in the last three years, right. as well as a receiver who's br a bright and blossoming star, but who's, situation is going to be more significant time than initially thought in training Puka Nakua, camp. you're talking. Puka in Puka Nakua. And so I would not put it past them to to make the call. Now, they're going to be on that hinge, though, of either you go all in in that direction, which they <laughs> did in 2022. They tried for Christian McCaffrey right. to, in a last-ditch effort to save their season. Mm -hmm. Mark and Spears, then Jalen Ramsey. And they didn't. And But but I'm specifically talking about like a horrible start in 2022 and they tried to go all in for Christian McCaffrey, trying to compete with Kyle Shanahan to get the job done. And then all of a sudden, their season completely imploded and they could not. Right. They were in the mix for Brian Burns. That didn't happen. Yeah. Let's go. First, I, I now think Devontae Adams is never playing another snap again for the Raiders. I don't think so. Either. This coming out the way it has, this thing could move quickly. And unlike some of these trade situations where it takes forever, like this is Devontae Adams. This is a future Hall of Famer. The season is already started. People will want to get him into his building. The contract is an interesting part of it. He's not making much money this year. So actually, co contractually, it's kind of a bargain. It saves the Raiders some money. It's not painful for them either. Next year, he's due $35.6 million. Then the year after that, 36.6. So th that's probably going to require some sort of renegotiation. May maybe not. I'm curious, like how much control he has in this process. We saw how much control Brandon Ayuk had in that process. It is important, but this might just be a, a rental. And I'm looking at like teams with cap space. First of all, would the 49ers ever think about it? Like Ooh. sending Debo away and Ooh. Raiders Ooh. get someone. Bring him home. 
that's from, something from Palo Alto. Uh, the Browns have a wide receiver who's playing terribly. They have a ton of cap space. They're always in on these he sort of things. He ain't the only one playing terribly. He, he's not <laughs> right. He's not going to want to go there. But if if he doesn't have much decision making, I could see the Browns in on it. The Patriots and the Steelers who were in on Ayuk, you would think would be teams that would be in on Devontae Adams. That's logical. Like the Lions. Oh my God. That's not a crazy. I'm, and I'm going through the, the wow. top to bottom of cap oh, space team. God. The Lions have a ton of cap space and they could certainly use oh another God. wide receiver. So that's what I'm saying is <laughs> really? like, I think that this is going to outrageous. I think this is going to go somewhat quickly. And I think, I think they'll do better than a conditional second. Am I crazy? I don't, I don't know. Am I crazy? Like a solid second? I mean, no one's giving up a one. No. What I'm saying, what I'm saying. Oh, is, no. If, if, we would never give up a, a first round draft pick that we miss on 50% of the time for a future Hall of Famer who we know is going to help our team this year. Oh, no, so. God. Detroit, like, Detroit is not giving up a first round. No, I get it. Some teams would. I'm just the, the, like, the mind hive. Like, but we'll give up an extra first to trade up to go draft Marcus Davenport or, or Lave or whatever. Like people give up extra first all the time when you get Saints land. like wow. yeah, the Saints could be in the mix. They could certainly <laughs> need a wide good. receiver. Like yeah. go for it. so many teams. This is fun. Hook up De De Derek and Devontae. Uh-huh. Exactly. How about that? All I'm saying is when it comes out clearly <laughs> through a player's camp that he would prefer to be traded, that automatically tells teams on the outside Come get me for cheaper than you would have had to before. Yeah. What I was going to say before is that uh, he's been unhappy for a while in Vegas, and he was very unhappy when Derek Carr left. So that makes total sense for him to end up maybe reuniting with him in New Orleans. Now, the Saints, they can pull off some salary cap voodoo oh, like man. no other team, but they only have $2.7 million of space right now. And they so. are going to be in cap hell for eternity. <laughs> they always yeah. figure it out. So is it really hell? <laughs> I don't know. It out for the year, so, but by the at, way, some, Steve, at some too. point. It just clicked for me to your Rams question for me. You know who the backup in Los Angeles is? Oh, is, the, hospital, I don't know, awkward, the hospital thrower? Awkward hallway Jimmy crossing. Garoppolo and Avante. <laughs> oh, oh, hospital no. balls. Just avoid eye contact walking down the hallway. <laughs> this is great. Thank you to Devontae Adams. Wow. I've wanted the NFL to become more like the NBA with trades. And uh, this is what we need. A nice in-season trade. And the you know even the Raiders are into it. Vinny uh, Bontignori, who, who covers Bontignori, the yes, team very good. Mm -hmm. locally uh, for their big paper there in, in Las Vegas, the Review Journal said that the Raiders are also open to it and uh, a, a source with knowledge of the situation. He doesn't say the Raiders, but the source said the club has been reaching out to teams. So that That's wording, very no, that means it's bad. Wording. That wording, yeah. reaching out to teams That's that the bad. Raiders are reaching out, they're in on it too. Let's go. Um, <laughs> this is the NIL dude opting out of out of. Out of, uh -huh. uh, well, and also Raiders he can be part of the Super Bowl race for some team. That's like a fun value add. Yeah. Uh, Lots of trade him to the Panthers. All right, no. let's let's talk. Um, oh my God. Let's talk about one of the teams you said he would make some sense for the Atlanta Falcons. Yeah. It is time for your Door to More, presented by DoorDash. Yes, it's our TNF preview. Fun game, Bucks and Falcons, both coming off big wins. I think the Falcons have done a really nice job managing the season. I talk about this a lot. You're not going to be your full team right away. Sometimes you got some issues. They've got issues. Kirk Cousins can't move. They don't really have a great pass rush, but here they are at two and two against two wins, teams. wins against pretty good teams. Uh, they have a really hard schedule initially. If you look at the back half, it's yep. one of the easiest schedules in the league. Here's a home game in the division, uh, a big game for, for both of these teams. Atlanta can, uh, kind of be buried by Tampa here. If you're down two games in the division and you had lost at home, that's a pretty decent lead for Tampa in the a NFC South, Colleen. Yeah, I would expect the Bucks to obviously pressure Kirk Cousins here a ton in this game, the same way that they did to Jalen Hurts and the Eagles. They sacked Hurts five times in that game. They generated their highest pressure rate too um, in a game in almost three years. So this was like an unbelievable amount of heat that they were throwing at him. Obviously, we know Kirk Cousins operates much better when he's not under pressure, as most quarterbacks do. But I love the fact that Especially Falcons, him, though. You're yeah, right. <laughs> but Falcons head coach Raheem Morris worked right alongside with Bucks offensive coordinator Liam Cohen with the Rams, and they went against each other in practice. So they know each other. They know each other's tendencies. 
And I'm really excited to see that kind of chess match come out. Ah, uh, the lost year. <laughs> yeah, that was, yeah, that didn't go well. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know what? It's this is why be, Liam was there for a year. It is going to yeah. be interesting <laughs> because uh, like, kind of what we talked about when we were talking about quarterback island is this is a real opportunity for Baker Mayfield to will some things to happen um, against, you know, a, a defense that's finding itself, but the secondary has been really solid for, for the Falcons. Yep. And and I think that it's especially catching some people by surprise a little bit. So I, I do think that this is a good matchup in terms of that uh, multi-layered, multi-dimensional Liam Cohen, 11 personnel and Chris Godwin is Cooper cup now. And like all of these things, um, offense and, and really seeing how particularly some of the really savvy leaders and emerging stars in that Falcon secondary handle it. Right. They have got, they've got three big time veteran star players yep. in the same secondary, Jesse Bates, AJ Terrell, when he's playing right. And Justin Simmons is playing well and they've gotten good production out, out of the other guys. So you're right. That's, that's the strength. And it's a tough matchup against a really good receiver group. I think Evans is getting better mm -hmm. each week. I think there was maybe some injury stuff they weren't talking about. Chris Godwin is now their number one receiver by production. He looks like Chris Godwin from five years ago. He's having a great contract year right now. He has about a hundred yards more than Evans. He's making those plays after the catch. Uh, they're moving him inside and out of the slot, but a lot in the slot where I think he's at his best. And they were just picking the Eagles apart. They finally got their running game going last week after a pretty, uh, rough first three weeks of the season, a little better. And it was a really good game plan by Liam Cohen. Just like get the ball out to these guys. They can make plays after the catch and Evans in the red zone. And it's a lot to deal with. I think the Bucks have been a little steadier as a team overall than the Falcons. Boy, someone turned apart the Eagles secondary. That doesn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> look, it's been years. It's been years of this. <laughs> look, I love it. Speaking of the Falcons defense, Jesse Bates might be the defensive player of the year right now, at least in the contention, the way that I love that that, pick. that, I that love he's that. played. Justin Simmons finally seems to be getting comfortable. I mean, they really looked good as a tandem last week. We know AJ Terrell. He started out shaky. He's looking really good as well in the second there. I like that matchup. I just want to see if Atlanta's offense can deal with this defense because yeah. The, the, the Bucks are bringing smoke. Kyle Pitts didn't have a catch last week. He could be someone who could be a blitz breaker, right? Mm -hmm. If you get the ball to him, that way, you know, Cousins and, and Drake London have got something working. Bijan, Bijan, remember Bichon. that, Colleen? Bijan. Not Bijan, Bijan. Bijan. You know, he's something they've got going. Uh, I, I think this is going to be a tough dust up, so to speak. I mean, I think it's going to be a really, really good game. Even I, a little bit shorthanded, um, Todd Bowles just, has that juice oh, still, oh always. you know, he, he'll find, he'll like go and, and find someone in the stands and literally pick them up and throw them at the quarterback <laughs> as an extra rusher. <laughs> extra rusher. Like he, he is sending this heat, this, these extra pressures. Um, Kirk Cousins has struggled against that so far this season, just 48.5% of his passes, third lowest in the NFL against the blitz. This is a concern. Look, the the Falcons running game has not been very good this year. And that's because teams are loading up to stop it. I like mean, they're going to make Kirk Cousins beat them. OK, I mean, it, it got better last week. Tyler Algier. It He's was the dude. Man. It was an interesting it's moment. Ball. I was just like watching this. I'm like, oh, Algier gives them some juice. Like suddenly it started working in a different way with Algier and they ran with it. And Bajan is obviously incredible uh, and is better on passing down, certainly. But it's a tough combination. And you think like Todd Bowles, he's always going to have a great run defense. Like that's the one thing you yep. know about him. A lot of the best run defenses in history were coached by Todd Bowles, including with, with the jets. This one stinks. Everyone's running on them every week. So it's well, a Vita Vita being back. Helped That'll help yeah. a ton. And he, he helped them on the goal line last yeah. week. Although even, even in that game, like, you know, Saquon just didn't have many touches. Not that that wasn't frustrating at all. All right, let's pick this Ugh. game. <laughs> Tough one. I am so excited. I want everyone listening this deep into the show, quarterback Island to join me and Gerald McCoy live on YouTube after this game. I'm very excited. I don't really, oh, I don't really wow. know Gerald that well, but I came He's and great. I, He's I introduced laugh. myself to him. He had been very nice. Uh, he had been part of broadcast boot camp, So we met a little bit, but I'm really excited that he's going to be talking you better about wear your best jacket. Yeah. Uh, well, I'll be a good dresser. Okay. That's or a Batman. Good... Yeah. Batman. Don't, don't wear this. More shirt. like a cool. <laughs> Whoa. I'm just kidding. It looks oh great. No, I'm, I'm like, just kidding. It looks damn. great. This is a new purchase <laughs> had, that I'll no, never. I, no, this no, is a good shirt. It's a good never, shirt. Greg, it's I'll a good never wear shirt. Again. I went too far. I thought like <laughs> we're not, we decided we're not going island theme. We don't, they didn't have any island stuff. Um, I had a big purge Greg, this year and I got rid of all my Hawaiian e. shirts. Uh, I went I'll too be, far. I I'll went be too at far. home and so will Gerald. And so he'll probably wear something cool, but like 
at home. I'll, I'll wear my best okay. hoodie. Batman. All right. No, All right. no, we're Batman. Okay. Batman. But everyone should join us. We'll be live on YouTube about 10 minutes after the game. Colleen, why don't you pick it? I guess I... I okay, go ahead. I'm taking the Bucks um, in this one, and they have to win this one. I mean, this is arguably their most difficult stretch right now in their schedule. They have three divisional games in four weeks, and then they also have the Ravens, the Chiefs, and the Niners coming up. So... This is a game that I think the Bucks will win. They've been on fire. And the Falcons' offense just can't come together yet. Like, they have so much potential, and they just haven't been able to unlock it. And I just don't think it's going to happen this game. Uh, I agree with all your points. I am taking the Falcons, though, just because I this this secondary, you know, for the I think that they're just going to mess with this passing mm. game. And I think that's, that's going to be one of the deciding factors in this game. So I'm taking the Falcons. Short week, road team on Thursday Night Football, not like it's a long trip or anything. Just the way this, se- like, I just feel like these two teams feel like three and two teams to me. Sometimes right. I don't make it any smarter than that. And so that would mean that the Falcons get a win at home. I think teams that win games, like, I feel like they're lucky to, to be two and two, win games they maybe shouldn't have. They usually start playing better and then they win games, like, because they actually earn it. So they're one and a half point favorites at home. If it was in Tampa, I'd probably go Bucks, but I'll go Falcons. Ba- I, Baker's never going to make the island at this rate. <laughs> but Kirk, he's got four weeks. Kirk, he's he's got a four to weeks. Prove but Greg Kirk wrong and I, don't, I don't feel strong about this. I'm my heart. My, I'm rooting for the Bucks because I want a happy Gerald McCoy yeah, after the game. Yeah. Oh, uh, Kirk O'Chains, though he might be making it. I like the Falcons here. How about this? This is the third consecutive primetime game the Falcons have had. When is yeah. the last right. time you can say that? Wow. Yeah, that, that is crazy. It was an interesting move. I noticed that early from the schedule makers that, like, we're going big on Kirko uh, to start the season. Mike North really loves <laughs> Love Kirko. Kirko. Atlanta <laughs> Falcons. All right, uh, so we have our picks there. Uh, thank you for watching NFL Daily presented by DoorDash. This wasn't just any show. This was no. a, a quarterback island show. Did we do your... Your concept proud executive producer Jordan Rodriguez <laughs> and and supporting actor. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I um. I this is I a joy. Good. This is a joy every Tuesday. So thank you. Well, I love today's show. In fo- okay. Are you yes. holding up a yes? I'm giving or a, a, no? yes. I'm, I'm giving <laughs> a, a yes for today's show. Steve, will you be back with us in a month for the next quarter? I, I will. Battle? And you know what? Kirk, Kirk O'Change is going to make it because his new wide receiver Devonte Adams. Is oh, oh there you go. Island. All right. <laughs> Thanks again for watching NFL Daily. We'll be back with our preview show. Steve, working overtime this week, will be with myself and Patrick Claibon. And yeah, you know, uh, when Sam Darnold is on <laughs> quarterback freaking island and I'm hitting Colleen, football is back. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs>